in the cold and dangerous north, where threats exist beyond the comprehension of men, Sombres. the majestic direwolves of House Stark have captured the imagination and appreciation of the fans. Deck. As they are creatures that symbolize loyalty, strength, and the spirit of House Stark. Some even sacrifice themselves to save their masters, being faithful and dangerous creatures. But what happened to them? In this series of videos, we will be analyzing the life of each of the dire wolves, their fate, and the legacy they left in Westeros. We'll start by talking about the dire wolf who was a natural born leader, but had a sad outcome. Grey Wind, Rob Stark's Dire Wolf. And if you want to know the story of the rest of the dire wolves, stay tuned to this video, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Welcome to the Three Eyed Raven. In the first episode of Game of Thrones, the Starks found the dire wolves on their way back to the castle after executing a deserter from the Night's Watch. While returning, they find a dire wolf that had been speared to death by a stag. Next to the body of the dire wolf were five cubs. Initially, Ned wanted to eliminate them, but John convinced him to keep them. Lord Stark, there are five pups, one for each of the Stark children. The dire wolf is a sigil of your house. They were meant to have them. Later, a sixth albino dire wolf was found. What is it? A runt of the litter. That one's yours, Snow. From that moment on, the Starks took care of the wolves, creating a bond between them almost as strong as the bond the Targaryens have with their dragons. The relationship of Rob Stark and his dire wolf, Grey Wind, is an example of loyalty in the North. After Grey Wind was adopted by Rob, he became his faithful ally Grey Wind has accompanied him to every war, until the end of its days. Grey Wind is the name Rob gave to his dire wolf. Rob chose this name because he considered that the Grey Dire Wolf was very agile, as fast as the wind. This is one of the traits Rob shared with his Dire Wolf, they were both very fast and agile, especially in battle, where they were invincible. They never lost a battle because their attacks were as fast as the wind. But perhaps the connection between Rob and his Dire Wolf was greater than we might think at first. As we watched Game of Thrones, many fans speculated that Rob had supernatural abilities, and there was a magical connection between Rob and his dire wolf. It is theorized that Rob may have shared Bran's ability as a skin changer, a person who can enter the minds of other animals, either in dreams or while they are conscious. Although in the Game of Thrones series we saw no evidence that Rob had these powers, in the books there are clues that lead us to believe that if he had wished, he could have this power on the same level as his brothers. Rob had dreams similar to Bran's, and their emotional bond could possibly lead him to take control of the direwolf's mind. This leads us to wonder what would have happened if Rob developed these powers? Perhaps it would have prevented their sad fate, but we'll talk about that later. Rob faced many battles alongside Grey Wind, and he was always by his side. The bond between the two became stronger when Rob was proclaimed king in the north, and Grey Wind always stood by his side, both on the battlefield and when making important decisions. Grey Wind's presence in battle became a symbol of Rob's power, leadership, and loyalty to his men, all of whom, during battles, were thrilled to see a dire wolf on their side. Just as the Targaryen troops felt more excited to see a dragon accompanying them, so did the dire wolf motivate the Stark army. The connection to dire wolves is similar to the Targaryen connection to dragons. So Rob's dire wolf could sense when his master was in danger. We even saw him almost bite Jamie Lannister. My father learned the truth. That's why you had him executed. And your son killed him so the world wouldn't learn who fathered him. And you pushed my brother from a window because he saw you with the queen. <laughs> Grey 
Grey Wind's participation in battles was so incredible that it was considered to be the leader of certain troops and led the men to victory. However, Rob made a serious mistake. It is believed that Rob did not feel comfortable with some people close to him, and that fear or distrust was transmitted to his dire wolf, which became aggressive with those people. Possibly for this reason, is why the dire wolf is away from Rob during the Red Wedding, the moment in which the betrayal of the Freys and the Boltons occurred. Remember that Grey Wind could sense if there was danger, in the same way as other wolves, but by keeping him away Rob could not see that his enemies were plotting against him, and this would be his last day. Then happened what the Lannisters ordered, they all lost their lives that sad night. Rob and Grey Wind lost their lives in the same way, being betrayed. After the Red Wedding, the Freys and Boltons continued to taunt the Starks, using the direwolf's body for jokes. Arya, who had just arrived at this place, saw the whole scene. Grey Wind's fate was a sad one, as was Rob's, both agile and brave, as fast as the wind in battle but unable to escape betrayal. One of the most acclaimed direwolves by the fans is Nymeria, Arya's direwolf who had to escape from King's Landing after the Lannisters demanded her life. Nymeria's story begins the same way as her direwolf siblings. They were found by the Starks after they executed Will, the deserter of the Night's Watch. Jon Snow convinced Ned to keep the cubs, after all, they were the symbol of House Stark, so a direwolf was assigned to each of them. Nymeria's name comes from a warrior queen from Dorne named Nymeria who led her people on an exodus from the lands of Roin to Dorne, where they settled and merged with the local culture. Arya feels a connection to the strength and determination of this historical figure and therefore names her direwolf in her honor. Arya wished to be like Nymeria, to have adventures and travel the world. When we begin Game of Thrones, Arya is receiving an education to become the lady of some prince. However, Arya is more interested in adventures and battles. She does not wish to be limited to her duties as the daughter of the Lord of Winterfell. It is for that reason that Nymeria's name is so important, because it is a reminder of who Arya really wants to become, and it is a theme that is constantly repeated in the series. Nymeria becomes a loyal companion for Arya. Throughout the series, Arya teaches Nymeria useful skills, and Nymeria proves her loyalty and protectiveness to Arya on multiple occasions, such as when she defends Arya from Joffrey. While Sansa and Joffrey were walking near a river, they noticed Arya training with Micah, the butcher's son. They were using wooden swords, something that caused Joffrey much amusement, and he did not miss the opportunity to humiliate the butcher's son. Joffrey began to mistreat Micah and Arya attacked him. For a few moments, we had a fight between Joffrey and Arya, but Joffrey won it comfortably because Arya still had no training with swords. Arya's fear of Joffrey's aggressiveness puts Nymeria on alert, who attacks Joffrey by biting his hand. <laughs> Direwolves have an emotional bond with the Starks, similar to the Targaryen connection with their dragons. The wolves sense when their master is in danger and try to defend their master. Joffrey is lucky the direwolf didn't finish him off at that moment. These events strengthen the bond between Arya and Nymeria but also put Nymeria in danger. 
Arya knows that Nymeria will be sacrificed for what she did to Joffrey, so she decides to say goodbye to her. Arya asks Nymeria several times to leave, but Nymeria apparently did not want to leave Arya alone. As Joffrey's guards approach, Arya picks up a stone and throws it at Nymeria, which frightens her, and she leaves the place. This is a pretty sad moment in the story, but as we mentioned in the other videos where we talked about dire wolves, the stories of dire wolves often symbolize the Starks. And just like Nymeria, Arya had to escape for her life. After Ned Stark loses his life, Arya escapes from the Lannisters and trains to become a dangerous weapon, and thus avenge her family. After Nymeria is pushed away by Arya Stark, she begins her life in the wild, while Arya must face many situations that bring her to the brink of losing her life. For many years fans wanted to see Nymeria again, but it wasn't until Season 7 that we saw her again. Arya was in the north, and her horse started to get scared. At first, we thought it might be some criminal or a white walker. Arya grabs her sword as she also hears something approaching. She is quickly surrounded by multiple dire wolves, and at her back is the largest of them all, Nymeria. There are two ways to interpret this scene. The first is that either Nymeria really hadn't recognized Arya, and was about to attack her when she spoke to her, or she really did recognize her but didn't forget the stone Arya threw at her to get her to walk away. Whatever the reason, Nymeria appeared to be upset and showed signs of distrusting Arya. Arya begins to tell her that she is on her way north and asks her to go with her. I'm heading north, girl. Back to Winterfell, I'm finally going home. Come with me. Come with me. However, Nymeria has a new life and ignores Arya. When Arya tells Nymeria, that's not you, she references an earlier conversation between Arya and her father Ned Stark, in the first season. At that moment, Ned tells Arya that one day she will be a lady married to a lord and live in a castle. To which Arya replies, that's not me, indicating that she does not want to follow the traditional path of a noblewoman in Westeros and that she has other plans for her life. But someday could be Lord of a Holdfast. Can I be Lord of a Holdfast? You will marry a High Lord and rule this castle. And your sons and princes shall be knights and lords. Mm -hmm. No, that's not me. When Arya is reunited with Nymeria in Season 7 and asks her to return home with her, Nymeria walks away with her pack. Arya understands that, like herself, Nymeria has gone her own way, and created a new life away from her human family. By saying that's not you, Arya recognizes and accepts that life alongside her is no longer Nymeria's destiny, as the dire wolf has found her place as the leader of her pack. Arya thought that returning to Winterfell would bring her happiness, that she would once again take her place as a Stark, but it was short-lived. In the finale of Game of Thrones, Arya sailed away on a ship to explore the world, completely removing herself from her duties as Princess of Winterfell and being free as Nymeria. Now, Nymeria is currently in the north with her pack, the last time we saw Arya she was heading west, so a reunion between Arya and Nymeria wouldn't happen for a long time. However, if the Jon Snow series does come to fruition, we could see not only a reunion of Nymeria with Arya, but Nymeria could join Ghost and Jon Snow to fight some threat. 
perhaps Nymeria's pack is something we could see in the Game of Thrones sequels. Nymeria and Arya Stark's life is one full of hardship and injustice, but we hope that like Nymeria, Arya will find her place in the world, even if it is by becoming an explorer who discovers lands that have never been discovered before. When people ask you what happened here, tell them the North remembers. Tell them winter came for House Frey. Although Game of Thrones is not focused on a single character, in the last seasons we could see how the story revolved around Jon Snow, the unexpected Targaryen. But Jon had a faithful companion with whom he joined in the North, who could follow him throughout the new series. Ghost, his dire wolf. But although in the first instance it was supposed to be a wolf for each official son of the Starks, one of these wolves was given to Jon, the albino wolf. What is it? A run to the litter. That one's yours, Snow. Let's talk about the symbolism between Ghost and John. First of all, Ghost was the unexpected wolf, the one who was different from the others, but was part of the family. Ghost was found away from the rest of the cubs, but was raised as one of them. This is exactly the same as the story of John Snow who was raised as a Stark despite not being a legitimate one. The wolves represent the Stark family. We have heard several times during the series how they refer to themselves as wolves. But you didn't slaughter every one of the Starks. No, no, that was your mistake. You should have ripped them all out, root and stem. Leave one wolf alive. And the sheep are never safe. Understanding that wolves symbolize the Starks, we can have a better understanding of the analogy between Ghost and John. Ghost is white or silver-furred, because he symbolizes John's lineage. Although John is a Stark, John is the White Wolf because he is also a Targaryen, and the color white symbolizes this family's hair. If we look closely, we are already being told from the very first episode that Jon Snow is a Targaryen. Now, Ghost accompanies Jon all his life, he follows him to Castle Black when he joins the Night's Watch, even helping Samwell Tarly. When John is upset with someone, so is Ghost. This happens because there is an almost magical connection between them. In the books, it is implied that John might have the ability of a ward, meaning to enter Ghost's mind. An ability that we did not see from him in Game of Thrones, but that we could see in a sequel, and would show that Jon Snow has not only the dragon riding abilities of the Targaryens, but also has the ability to enter the minds of animals, like other people in the North, especially members of his Stark family. This ability is linked to the ancient magic of the Children of the Forest. Possibly this was an ability they gave to the First Men, in order to be able to face the White Walkers during the First Long Night. House Stark has its roots in the First Men, so the link to magic, the Children of the Forest, and the Starks is present throughout the story. It is for this reason that Bran Stark also developed these powers. According to Kit Harington, Jon Snow finds himself sad in the North, not knowing who he really is, questioning whether he is a Stark or a Targaryen. In order for Jon Snow to develop the power to enter Ghost's mind, he must first recognize or understand his Stark lineage. Perhaps he needs to thoroughly study this family's connection to the children of the forest, and their role in this whole story. If the story of Snow, Jon Snow's life is based on finding the meaning of his life, we could see him and Ghost going into the north in search for answers, 
something that could lead us to know the origins not only of the Starks, but also of the White Walkers. On the other hand, although Ghost is not a Stark, he became one of the most iconic characters of the series, with his distinctive white fur, red eyes, and as an albino. Throughout the plot of Game of Thrones, Ghost has proven to be a far more intelligent direwolf than his brothers and loyal to Jon Snow, protecting him on countless occasions. In the sequel, both Jon and Ghost could face new threats in the North, as currently Winterfell and the Great Wall of Ice are rebuilding after the attack of the White Walkers. The first immediate problem that Jon Snow has, it's some wildlings could cause problems in the Great Wall of Ice, and start migrating towards Winterfell. Also, let's not forget that in this universe there are other creatures like the giant ice spiders, which exist in the books but we never saw them in the series. Another thing to take into account is that Jon and Ghost could encounter hostile direwolves further north, and Ghost would have to fight for Jon again. The bond between the two characters could also be explored in terms of how it affects the people around them in the series. Ghost's presence alone is a reminder to everyone that Jon is a Stark, being protected at all times. Obviously, we expect the return of Maisie Williams in the series as well, which could represent a reunion, not only between Jon Snow and Arya, but also between Ghost and his sister Nymeria. We will be creating Nymeria's own video, but the union between Nymeria and Ghost could be quite interesting, and very few people could face these two direwolves united. So in the Jon Snow series, I would like to see much more of Ghost, and how he helps Jon in the North to find his purpose. I would also like to see how he eventually faces other direwolves, and eventually reunites with Nymeria. Ghost is my favorite direwolf, and hopefully Jon Snow's return will include him. In fact, when a preview of this series is released, I could assure that only Jon and Ghost will be shown, and that's enough to spark the interest of a fanbase that wants a continuation of this story. But tell me what do you think about Ghost and his involvement in the Jon Snow series? How do you think his story will continue? Run to your brother. The sooner you make it to him, the sooner you get to see him again. When we talk about sad moments in the Stark family, we usually talk about the Red Wedding, the end of Eddard Stark, or even Sansa's marriage to Ramsay. But one of the saddest stories of this family comes from one of their offsprings who is hardly talked about. Rickon Stark was a member of this family with a lot of potential, but he got caught in a battle and paid the ultimate price. But what would you think if I told you that the Three-Eyed Raven in the first instance wished to recruit Rickon to be his successor, and that we have evidence within the series itself? Rickon is the youngest of the five legitimate descendants of Lord Eddard Stark and Lady Caitlin Stark. Rickon and Shaggy Dog, his direwolf, play a crucial role in the history of the Stark family, and in the development of the plot in general, because, although we did not have such epic moments with these characters, their path through history deeply marked their siblings, and their story could be full of secrets. The relationship between Rickon and Shaggy Dog is established early on, when the direwolf pups are discovered by the Starks on a journey back to Winterfell. Rickon chooses Shaggy Dog, a wolf with black fur and bright green eyes. This direwolf was the most mischievous of his siblings. The two of them share a deep, mystical connection that is reflected in their personalities and actions. As we have mentioned in other videos about direwolves, they share a magical connection with the Starks, and often reflect the personalities of their masters. Shaggy Dog's wild and undisciplined nature is reflected in Rickon's character, who due to his young age and the absence of his parents and older siblings, struggles to understand and cope with the reality of war and politics that plague his family. Rickon's education was the same as his brother's. As Prince of Winterfell, he studied the history of Westeros, from the ancient stories of the White Walkers, to Aegon's conquest and all the Targaryens' influence in Westeros. Rickon, like Bran Stark, seemed to have the potential to develop supernatural powers. 
The plot of Rickon and Shaggy Dog begins in Winterfell, where they both grow up and live alongside the rest of the Stark family. During this time, Rickon and Shaggy Dog adapt to life in the castle, and learn to coexist with the other direwolves and their owners. However, their peaceful life in Winterfell is interrupted when Rickon's older brothers, Rob and Jon, as well as their father, Eddard Stark, are forced to leave to face the conflicts that threaten the kingdom. But Rickon, like Bran, had supernatural powers, or possibly the three-eyed raven intended to recruit him in case Bran could not be recruited. How do we know this? After Eddard loses his life, both Bran and Rickon have visions where they see him in the crypts, symbolizing that their father had lost his life. At the time, both Bran and Rickon were unaware of their father's death, but both had visions of it. Recall that the crypts of Winterfell is the place where the body of the Stark who lose their lives is deposited. The fact that they both dreamed about this means that they both have supernatural powers, or that the Raven put the vision in both of them. The scene occurs in episode 10 of the first season. In this episode we can see how Shaggy Dog almost attacks the wild Osha who is carrying Bran. As I mentioned, Shaggy Dog was quite temperamental and wild, Rickon had to control him so he wouldn't attack them. Bran gets annoyed with Rickon and asks him what he is doing in the crypts, but what Rickon answers surprises Bran too much. No, I came to see father. I saw him last night when I was sleeping. This is evidence that Rickon had the same powers as Bran, he just hadn't developed as well as he had. Everything gets worse for Rickon after Theon betrays the Starks and takes control of Winterfell, forcing the brothers to escape to the north where they end up separated. This separation is very difficult for Rickon, but he was still accompanied by his faithful direwolf. Rickon believes he would find refuge with his allies in the north, but is betrayed and delivered to the Boltons. The first to be sacrificed is Shaggy Dog. During a scene in episode 3 of season 6, we see Osha and Rickon being handed over to Ramsay Bolton, who doubts that Rickon is really a Stark. Ramsay asks for proof that he really is Rickon, and they hand over Shaggy Dog's head as evidence. We should remember that people thought that both Rickon and Bran had lost their lives in Winterfell, and it was not until later that it was known that they had escaped. With this sad scene, the end of Shaggy Dog is shown but this would only be the beginning of the end for Rickon. During the Battle of the Bastards, Jon Snow asked Ramsay to hand over his brother Rickon, however, after Ramsay released him, he began to shoot arrows at him, and one of these ended his life. Both Rickon and Shaggy Dog's lives were marked by the war, and they ended up being collateral victims of it. Neither of the two were active in the conflicts for the crown or for power in those regions, however, they had to face cruelty and betrayal, just for carrying a surname that meant power in the north. The death of Shaggy Dog and Rickon, while a sad and cruel one, serves as gasoline for the determination to overthrow the Boltons and take back Winterfell. It is the loss of their brother that fills Sansa and Jon with anger, and gives them that courage during the battle. Sansa subsequently finished off Ramsay, and got her revenge, not only for the bad things she experienced, but also for her own brother. Rickon's body was deposited in the crypts of Winterfell, where he rested in peace, at least for a while, as he possibly resurrected during the long night. This is one of the most obscure elements of the story and that is rarely mentioned, and that is that during the long night, possibly the Starks who had lost their lives and who had been buried in the crypts, returned for the last time. Of course, after the Night King was defeated, all the Starks were finally able to rest. The story of Rickon and Shaggy Dog is one full of wasted potential. A young man with the potential to be incredibly powerful, to have visions clearer than Bran's, but who ended up caught in the hands of the enemy. But tell me what you think about the story of Shaggy Dog and Rickon Stark. Could it be that the Three-Eyed Raven tried to recruit him before Bran? Could it be that Bran really was the Three-Eyed Raven's plan B?
In the Game of Thrones universe, there is a large number of complex characters and fascinating relationships. Among them, the connection between Sansa Stark and Lady, her dire wolf, is especially interesting. Through their similarities, their shared histories, and Lady's tragic end, we can examine how Lady's death influenced Sansa, and how it might affect her in a possible sequel to the series. In the frozen lands of the North, there was a young noblewoman named Sansa Stark, who lived in the majestic castle of Winterfell with her beloved family. Sansa was known for her beauty and gentleness, and dreamed of a future filled with love and happiness. One day, fate granted her with a special gift, a dire wolf cub whom she named Lady. Lord Stark, there are five pups, one for each of the Stark children. The dire wolf is a sigil of your house. We were meant to have them. Later, a sixth albino dire wolf was found. What is it? A run to the litter. That one's yours, Snow. Lady was the smallest and sweetest of the six dire wolves the Starks found, and quickly became Sansa's faithful companion. She had a grey coat and a fragile appearance, but possessed great strength and agility. Together, they shared laughter and adventures, and became inseparable. Lady became the symbol of Sansa's love for her home and family, and represented the loyalty and courage that characterized the Starks. Like the rest of the family, Sansa created an almost magical bond with this dire wolf. There were many similarities between Sansa and Lady. Both Sansa and Lady are known for their gentleness and delicate appearance. Sansa, being the eldest daughter of Eddard Stark and Caitlin Tully, was raised to be a lady and displayed politeness at all times. Lady, on the other hand, is the smallest and most trusting of the six dire wolf cubs, reflecting the innocence and kindness of both characters at the beginning of the series, and it is thanks to Lady's end that Sansa's character begins to develop beyond her childish idealisms. Sansa spent her days training to become a queen, and enjoying her time with her dire wolf. The day came when Sansa and her family must leave for King's Landing, the capital of the realm, where her father would serve as Hand of the King. With great sadness in her heart, Sansa left her home, but took Lady, her faithful companion, with her as a connection to Winterfell. This dire wolf would protect her should anything bad happen at King's Landing. Taking the wolves to King's Landing, it turns out, is one of the worst mistakes the Starks made, as wolves are not welcome in the capital. However, the fact that the wolves traveled to King's Landing is an analogy to the Starks themselves, who were not accepted in King's Landing. This disturbing place was a full of intrigue and danger, very different from the home Sansa and Lady had left behind. Together, they faced challenges and learned to navigate the difficult world of politics and betrayal. But through it all, the love and loyalty between Sansa and Lady never wavered. Lady was a reflection of Sansa, and would surely accompany her throughout her life. However, this story became quite sad, and Sansa and Lady's innocence did not last forever. One day, an act of bravery by Sansa's sister Arya and her dire wolf Nymeria triggered a series of unfortunate events. Arya allowed Nymeria to attack Joffrey, after the prince threatened her friend, which ended in a fight between Arya and Joffrey, which was interrupted by Nymeria. Arya then managed to drive Nymeria away to keep her safe, but her actions affected Lady. Queen Cersei, in an act of cruelty and revenge, demands that Lady pay the price for Nymeria's defense. Though Sansa pleaded for her life, she was not heard. So be it. We have another wolf. As you will. You can't mean it. Get her a dog, she'll be happier for it. No, not Lady. Lady didn't bite anyone, she's good! Lady was it there! Is this your command? Your grace? Take the girls to their rooms. Sansa's heart was filled with grief and despair, but there was nothing she could do to save her beloved lady. With great regret, her father, Eddard Stark, 
carried out the terrible act of taking Lady's life, something Ned Stark did not want to do, but had to do because of his responsibility as Hand of the King. Ironically, just as Ned sacrificed Lady to please the Lannisters, without knowing it, he was also sacrificed, and handed Sansa over to the worst people. Ned asked to be the one to finish Lady, trying to give her at least a dignified and honorable end. In that tragic moment, Sansa lost not only her beloved Lady, but also her innocence and her dreams of a future full of love and happiness. From that moment on, Sansa begins to understand that she is living in a hostile place, and just like Lady, she could also lose her life, something that is confirmed after she sees when her father's life is taken. Since that somber day, Sansa's life changed forever. Grief stricken by the loss of Lady and the pain of betrayal suffered, Sansa learned to be strong and cunning, and to face a cruel and merciless world. Lady's death was the moment that began to shape the Sansa we see in the final season of Game of Thrones. A Sansa who has endured grief away from her family, but was eventually able to return home. Lady's influence on Sansa's life will undoubtedly be a theme that we will continue to talk about in the future, and one that we may learn more about in the upcoming Song of Ice and Fire books, and possibly in a Game of Thrones sequel. It would be interesting if Sansa again has a direwolf to protect her, perhaps a daughter of Nymeria, Arya's direwolf, which could give her the same name Lady in honor of her aunt. But tell me what do you think about the story of Lady the direwolf? Do you think that in the future Sansa will have a direwolf like Lady again? <laughs> When we talk about magic in the universe of A Song of Ice and Fire, we usually think of dragons, resurrections, or voices from the fire. But magic in Westeros can also be seen in the direwolves and in the Stark family. The wolf who sacrificed himself to save mankind, who fought alongside Hodor against the White Walkers. Summer, Bran Stark's direwolf. A wolf that without him, mankind would not have won the long night. Do you want to know why? Summer is one of the six direwolf cubs found by members of House Stark at the beginning of the series. Bran Stark used to play with his direwolf and climb through different places in Winterfell. Bran, the second youngest of Eddard and Caitlyn Stark's sons, adopts Summer, establishing a special connection between them. The connection between Bran and his direwolf is similar to the connection between dragons and the Targaryen, but it becomes much more powerful, as some Starks can enter the minds of their direwolves, and even live in the wolves' bodies, forgetting that they were ever human. Bran was curious and eager to learn and explore the world around him. However, his life changes drastically when while climbing a tower, he discovers Cersei and Jaime Lannister in an intimate encounter. At that moment, Jaime pushes him out the window leaving him paralyzed from the waist down. Summer is described as a wolf with silver-gray fur, giving it a majestic and elegant appearance. Its eyes are a piercing golden yellow, reflecting its intelligence and ability to connect with its master, Bran Stark. Summer is considerably larger than an ordinary wolf, allowing him to take on much larger and more dangerous enemies. This helped it save Bran on several occasions. Behaviorally, Summer is an extremely loyal and protective animal, especially towards Bran. From the moment Bran adopts it as his direwolf, Summer becomes his guardian and inseparable companion. We also know that it was perhaps the most intelligent of its siblings. Something that could also point to Bran Stark's physical and mental characteristics, as these wolves are usually a reflection of their masters. Despite his size and menacing appearance, Summer proves to be compassionate and loving to those he considers part of his pack. 
But this dire wolf was not only a protector, Summer was also a skilled and fierce hunter, capable of taking on prey much larger than himself, and protecting Bran and his friends from numerous dangers. His bravery and determination in the fight against enemies such as the White Walkers and their wraiths will be remembered forever, and demonstrates why House Stark is honored to use this symbol in their family. Although Bran was comatose for a long time, his connection with Summer grew stronger and stronger. Summer used to be near Bran in his room, and even saved his life. From that moment on, Summer becomes an integral part of Bran's life, protecting him and offering him comfort in his darkest moments. As the story progresses, Bran develops magical abilities such as warging, which makes it possible for him to enter the mind of Hodor and his dire wolf. In Summer's body, Bran could run freely and experience the world in a different way but he also ran the risk of becoming accustomed to living as a wolf, and losing his human mind. Summer was by Bran's side the whole time. But Summer's end came after Bran's search for the Three-Eyed Raven. In the cave north of the Wall, Bran and his friends find themselves in a desperate situation. The White Walkers and their followers, the Wraiths, beings reanimated and controlled by the White Walkers, attack the shelter where they are hiding. Although the children of the forest try to stop them, they cannot stop these creatures. As the enemy forces approach, Summer bravely confronts them, showing fierce loyalty to Bran and his friends. Meanwhile, Bran is caught up in visions of the past, exploring the mysteries and secrets surrounding his family and the history of Westeros, unaware that he too is at risk of losing his life. Bonjour. Your talks. Those are his kin when he's about to charge. And those it when he's going to dodge me, lady. And the Night King wipes out the original Three-Eyed Raven, and Bran is left vulnerable and unprotected. Summer, aware of the impending danger, throws itself into battle against the enemies that threaten its master and its friends. Although the odds are against him, Summer fights with all his strength to protect Bran, and give his friends time to escape from the cave. Had it not been for Summer, Bran would have lost his life that day, and the men would not have stood a chance against the Night King. Summer's sacrifice at this crucial moment is a testimony to the magical connection and unbreakable bond he shares with Bran. It also shows that just as there are creatures that can end the lives of men, others can help them and even give their lives for them. Summer lost his life along with Hodor, two honorable beings who dedicated their lives to protect Bran, who became the Three-Eyed Raven and later defeated the Night King. Summer's story was one that shows that loyalty and heroism is not limited only to the humans in this story and it is also a reminder that all characters are at risk, even those who embody noble and virtuous values. Hodor and Summer demonstrated unconditional love and an indomitable commitment to Bran and his mission, allowing them to face their own fears and sacrifice for the greater good. Summer's story is heroic but sad. However, it is one of the best endings a dire wolf could have because unlike his siblings, some of whom were sacrificed and others had to escape, Summer gave his life to save men and fight against the White Walkers, something that makes him one of the most important dire wolves in the history of this world. But tell me what you think about Summer, the dire wolf who sacrificed itself for everyone. Which was your favorite dire wolf, or are you one of those who prefers a dragon? And if you liked this content, I invite you to become a member of this channel. Each contributor will see their name at the end of all videos.
And for more videos with theories, news, and stories from the Game of Thrones universe, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. You are on. The Three-Eyed Raven.